Welcome to Honey Do Me, a podcast that goes into the bedroom and beyond, hosted by Emma Norman and Cass Anderson. Here at Honey Do Me, we don't have all the answers, so we chat with experts, educators, and badass changemakers to get them. We are here to remind our listeners and ourselves that what we're going through is normal, that we are worthy of love and pleasure, and that we are all in this together. So tell us, honey, how do you do you? Hi. <laughs> I love when we jinx. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Great. Thriving, mm-hmm. living my best life. I am my highest self at this point. <laughs> Catch up. Catch up. I'm trying. Do you want to talk a little bit about how big of a week you're about to have? I'm about to have the biggest week of my life. Transformative, I'd say. That's one word to use. <laughs> I'm moving mm-hmm. not far away. But right next door to Emma. I know. It's going to be right right down the hall from me. I'm going to be able to pop over and it's pop in. It's an outside in. hall, but yeah. Yeah. Also known as a street. <laughs> eh. Anyway. Streets, the hallways <laughs> of outside. Is it technically a street if you're still in the same parking lot? I don't know. Anyways, no. we're feet from each other. Yeah. And it's going to be so much fun because I can literally just hop over your balcony whenever I want, punch through that door. And be at your house. And you're in. Our dogs are going to be neighbors. We're Mm going to be neighbors. Our partners are going to be neighbors. We all have somebody. We all will have somebody. And I'm really excited for us. And I'm so excited to help you move. Thank you. I knew you would be. That's why I asked. Mm. That was a little bit of sarcasm on my part, but I'm glad you couldn't (laughs) pick that up. I did. (laughs) I'm just keeping the energy alive. Keeping the excitement, the thriving, the living my best life. Well, speaking of moving to different parts. Yeah, we're moving to the back this week (laughs) and we're talking about anal. Yeah, we are. This was so enlightening and informative. and Highly requested by Emma. (laughs) It was. Um, I think it was the most honest and like educational conversation I've ever had about things to do with my butt. Yes, 100%. <laughs> I mean, I don't have that many conversations about my butt and well, um, stuff going I in I haven't it. had the opportunity. Right. right. I haven't had the space. Um, <laughs> the the actual space. <laughs> the physical space, the emotional <laughs> space, the spiritual space. To absorb everything that could go into my butt. Mm, that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to do moving forward because we learned so many things that you can put in your butt. All safe things, but also things what you can't. And also what you can't put in your butt. And touching on how to do butt stuff is incredibly important. And there's a whole process that I had no idea that like was prep Mm -hmm. for doing butt stuff. Yes, there's prep because you got to think about the poop. You got to think about the poop. And we touch on the poop because that is telling you not a single person after we say anal isn't thinking, but what about things that come out of my butt? A hundred percent. I'd be so I'd be a dirty little liar. (laughs) literally a big (laughs) liar if I said that when I thought about anal I wasn't like hmm that's not for me because stuff comes out of there but yeah I have to think about stuff comes out of everyone's for the most part (laughs) (laughs) do you have to think about it I have to think about the fact you know (laughs) I'm just trying to say I'm not alone you're not alone I'm not the only one that poops and I no you poop too (laughs) we all do it it's you have to have you ever done anal before I've tried. I'm going to be honest. (laughs) I'm going to be honest and admit something that I did not admit in the episode. I'm going to say that I've tried before. It was a drunken, hot... No. Take out the hot. (laughs) That was too long of a pause. It was going to be hot mess, but I Mm. I hesitated too long on the hot. No hesitation. It was a drunken, bad idea. Mm. And it didn't go far, literally and (laughs) figuratively in this sentence. (laughs) So Just the tip. Yeah, and and it was just a bad, bad idea. Have you ever tried anal? I have not. I have, if you, a family member is listening, turn it off, because I just don't. That just popped into my head, and I really don't want. Okay, just go. I've had, like, a finger up there, not my yeah. own. Yeah. Um, I mean, after this episode, you made it sound like you should be doing your own up there, too. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't like it. And I think it was because they were very rough. There was no lube. And it 
wasn't expected. Gotcha. It was a surprise, a, a dry su- surprise. <laughs> a surprise little butt twirl in there with that finger. Not just a twirl. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It's something going in something. Oh, yeah. Well, I've had, I've had a... F- <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yours was way worse yeah, than mine. It was. Yours was wet. Yeah, well, and again, it was dry. It was. So it was I'm an inaccurate you, was representation dry. of my experience. Got it. Yeah. The I've had a finger up the butt. I like that personally. What about a full hand? <laughs> if you put all of your fingers together to make a claw, that's the position I prefer because then it doesn't go in too Straight far. Straight up, it's the called butt. a DIY butt plug. <laughs> DIY butt plug. Yeah. Exactly. God gave you two. <laughs> So can't ask for much more than that. But yeah, after this episode, it just made me rethink things about butt play that I didn't think my mind was ever going to change, to be honest with you. Exactly. I 100% agree. Like my partner and I had talked about it a little bit, but both of us were kind of like, not for us. Right. But now I'm like, why not? Right. It's only because of the like misconceptions that I had about it. Like totally. I really thought it had to hurt and it there was like no pleasure for me that was to be found in my butt. In my butt. But just like the rest of my but. body, it is for me. So we brought on a true expert this week. We talked with Tristan Tarmino. What? I was trying to say butt spurt, but like butt expert, but it didn't work. So I stopped. Mm. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) Tristan is a sex educator, a feminist author, and the host of Sex Out Loud podcast. In addition to that, she literally wrote books on anal play and anal pleasure. Mm -hmm. So she wrote the book on it, people. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. What more of an expert could you find? Cream of the crop. Best you can get. Yeah. Tristan was so much fun, so honest, gave us just literally the best advice. Mm -hmm. So we're so excited to share all of this butt stuff with you. And we'll see you on the other side. See you on the other side, baby. <laughs> so we just want to start by having you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm a sex educator and I work in a bunch of different mediums. Um, I've written several books on sex and relationships. I do a lot of speaking, lectures at colleges and universities, and also trainings for public health and healthcare professionals. I host my own podcast called Sex Out Loud. And for several years, I made sex education films and porn films. Right. Okay. So we definitely want to get into how you started getting into that industry of making sex education and porn films. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, that came from sex education. You know, I wrote my first book that I wrote is called The Ultimate Guide to Anal Sex for Women. And I was going around the country um, hosting workshops about anal pleasure. And then people would come to me afterwards and say, this is really great. You should make a video version of it. And it's true that people have different learning styles, right? Like some people learn from reading a book. Some people learn from taking a class Mm -hmm. and some people are visual learners. Mm -hmm. So I thought, yeah, why not? But I also thought, I don't want this to be about kind of like anatomy diagrams and I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to wear a white coat and (laughs) speak like in vaguely, you know, generalized terms about anal sex. Part of why I wrote about anal sex is to help lift the taboo of it all. Right. And so to then make a movie about it, but not show it. Mm -hmm. seemed like a contradiction to me. It seemed like it was defeating the purpose. So I knew I wanted to have explicit sex in it. And when you have explicit sex in a movie, you are in X-rated territory in the United States. Right. So I actually had my film produced and distributed by um, an adult production company, Evil Angel. And then later on, I went to do an entire sex ed line for Vivid Entertainment, and that was called The Expert Guide to, and I covered all sorts of topics like the G-spot, female orgasms, threesomes, oral sex, all the things you might imagine. Well, that's such a great way to blend the learning styles. (laughs) I'm a visual (laughs) learner, and if I'm looking for something like explanations around how to with sex just being told it or having to read it isn't going to, it's not going to get me where I need to go. Mm -hmm. So having a great source to actually see it and like, yeah, I could maybe get a little pleasure out of it, but mainly I'm there to be watching. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can get pleasure out of it too. I'm not judging. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
But I think that's a great way to blend it for people who are like, no, can you just show me? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's fantastic. Well, right. There's a difference between me saying in a workshop or in a book, you know, anal sex takes a lot of warm up. Right. right? It's, right. There's a difference between that and and showing you what it means to actually warm up to anal penetration, Mm -hmm, right? Showing you steps, showing you examples of techniques, showing you lube, showing partners checking in with each other and asking, is this too much? Should I add another finger, right? That's, that's, that's just a different way of teaching. It's a whole other level of being clear and really getting (laughs) clear. (laughs) I'm known for being very straightforward. So I think that's funny. (laughs) I think all those topics can be really intimidating too. Like if you're starting to incorporate them and you've never done them before. So to actually like watch it happen feels like it's that first step. You know what I mean? It's getting you more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And also I want to like shout out, you know, all the porn performers that I worked with in my series. I think this is one of the most undervalued group of people in terms of their wealth of sexual knowledge. They have sex for a living. And the idea that we wouldn't consult them or ask them what they know about sex as experts themselves is ridiculous. Like they, this is what they do for work. And they have sex with a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And so it sort of behooves us to also listen to what their tips and techniques are. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't we listen to the experts? Yeah. (laughs) So where can I find these? The videos? You can find them Mm -hmm. on streaming platforms. I encourage you to ethically consume my porn and all Mm -hmm. other porn by paying for it. Um, And so you can go to some of the big streaming sites are places like adultdvdempire.com and gamelink.com. You can just search for my name and all my titles will come up there. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. Well, let's just dive into this anal play. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's dive in. Um, can we talk about internal versus external anal play mm. and kind of what that yeah. looks like? We really want to yeah. get into all the different types. Yeah. 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 Well, the thing about the butt is it's really rich in nerve endings. Um, all the tissue that makes up the anus, which is the anal opening, the anal canal, the rectum, just has tons and tons of nerve endings. So it feels really good to touch your butt. Like that's, you know, when people say like, why anal sex? Why would anyone want to do that? Uh I have to start the most basic, which is it feels good. Mm -hmm. Um, But because those nerve endings are present, even at the opening, external kinds of stimulation, whether that's rimming with your mouth and your tongue, whether that's using a finger, like a well-lubed finger to just stimulate around the outside. Um, You could also use a vibrator where, where you don't do it. You don't do any penetration. You just press the vibrator against the anal opening. That can feel really good. It can also relax the muscles. Um, And I also want to say that, you know, we, I talk a lot about anal penetration because there are steps and there are rules that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. But for some people, external stimulation is their jam, Mm -hmm. right? And so I want people to see that as it could be a warm up to anal penetration or it could be an activity in and of itself because there's lots of nerve endings and it feels really good. So it, it doesn't have to be a kind of appetizer. It can be the whole entree. The main course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that there's so many different options because it just stuff feels good down there or it can. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. But <laughs> can we get a little deeper into <laughs> internal? That was a good way to put that. It's hard not to do this without (laughs) puns. Yeah. I know. It just comes right out. Yeah. It just does. It does. Um, So the thing about anal penetration, as I said, is that um, we've got lots of nerve endings, so it feels really good. But along with those nerve endings, the tissue of the anus and rectum is very sensitive. And so essentially that means you can't just jam things in there. Okay. Right. <laughs> and fair. you yeah, can't just sort of spit on something and jam it in there either. Mm-hmm. You actually mm. do need lube. So even if we're talking about um, the tip of your pinky or a butt plug or anal beads or a penis or a dildo, um, lube is an absolute necessity. This is this is not 
non-negotiable people. (laughs) And spit (laughs) is not a lubricant in this case because spit works in the other hole in the vagina because the vagina does Mm self-lubricate and you can add to that. And and we've all, I use lube all the time, but I don't want to shame people who use, who spit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do want to shame them if they're doing it with anal (laughs) penetration because it doesn't do anything. It's not lube. Um, (laughs) so lube is really important. Obviously being really relaxed is important too. And I think this is something that people sometimes underestimate, which is that they think to themselves, okay, I really want to do this. I'm into this. This turns me on. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably all I need. But the truth is like our bodies hold stress in different places. And if you feel ambivalent about anal penetration or you feel like you have concerns or anxieties or you've heard things and you're not sure if they're true, all of that can actually affect your body Mm -hmm. and how your body responds to things like pleasure. So I think like a conversation about anal sex is really important before you go to anal sex. Like, I don't think it should be a surprise. Um, <laughs> that's you know what I mean? Like yeah. you could fish around there with your tongue and that might be okay. But, um, but I'm, I'm all for consent and mm-hmm. I'm all for people, you know, being deliberate and intentional about what they're doing and not sort of sneaky and just like, well, let's see how this goes. So I <laughs> yeah. want people to talk about it beforehand and, and also get clear if they have any, myths they want to clear up. There's a lot of myths about Mm -hmm. anal sex floating out there and that can affect, um, you know, how your body and mind react to it. So just do a little homework, put it out on the table, like what you're thinking about before you even go there, right? Before you even take the seal off the, off your brand new (laughs) bottle of lube. That makes total sense. That seems super fair. And we really want to get into all of that. I think we'd love to start by knowing what what can you put up your butt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can you put up your butt? Um, you can put a bunch of stuff up your butt. But oh. what I recommend <laughs> is fingers, tongues, penises, and sex toys that are designed specifically for anal penetration. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, one of the things that you can find on the internet, you can find so much on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things you can find on the internet are these x-rays, uh, and they're usually titled, you know, actual objects found in rectum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. these, are, these are actual x-rays, though. They are. Oh, They've my God. been leaked somehow, which is a HIPAA violation. But, right. um, but you see that people have put, you know, the ends of hairbrushes, bottles, Barbie dolls, all sorts of household items. And I'm going to say no to every single one of them, including vegetables. We've got a, so there's a, there's, there's one thing that's really important to know. And that is whatever you put in your butt has to have a base of some kind or a handle, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. unlike the vagina where you put something in the vagina, you penetrate it to a certain extent, and then you come up against the cervix, which is the back of the vagina, before the uterus. Um, and that kind of protects anything from going in up to the, uni- uni- the universe. <laughs> the uterus <laughs> is the universe. Um, it protects anything going in the uterus. But we don't have a cervix in our butt. And so something can keep going and going and going. There's no sort of stopping point there. That terrifies and, me. <laughs> no, I know. But then if you think about someone, say, like putting a magic marker up their ass, right? Ah, yeah. So it doesn't have a handle. It doesn't have a base. Your ass begins to have contractions when it's aroused. So just like you have vaginal contractions during sex, you have anal contractions. And so one thing that could happen is you could have a contraction and sort of suck that thing in, which I'm using the example of magic marker. Uh And I'm picturing the Crayola washable ones. I don't know why. (laughs) In purple. Um, Love these visuals. So you suck that Crayola (laughs) magic marker in and then your sphincters which, which are right inside the anal opening close. Cause that's what oh. sphincters do. They uh-huh. open and close That's their job. They're just doing their job. Just doing <laughs> and their then job. you're on your way to the emergency room. Yeah. So you got to have a base or a handle. Okay. That's like the number one rule. And if that didn't scare you into finding a pro- <laughs> oh an appropriate God. toy, yeah. then I don't know what will. Um, I am still confused on butt plugs to be honest. Oh <laughs> yeah. So great. What is their purpose? Because I feel like they're just kind of like 
like right right in there and then they just kind of sit now i just feel uncomfortable <laughs> okay so okay. i'm confused about where the pleasure comes from from a butt yeah plug. yeah this is something i could talk about literally for the whole episode just so you know <laughs> okay i want to no i want to say my bias up front which is that if i could only have one toy in my toy bag on a deserted island it would be a butt plug okay yeah so <laughs> i'm i'm here to sell it i'm here to evangelize ready for it um Okay. So butt plugs are usually a couple different shapes. They're either a teardrop shape. Sometimes they're, they have a neck and then kind of a mushroom. Um, and they have, and they all have a base, right? Mm -hmm. And you're right in that butt plugs are designed to go in your butt and stay there. Uh So essentially you're going to use lube. You're going to go slow. You're going to work this plug into someone's ass or into your own ass And then right above the base is usually the smallest part of the toy. And that's meant for the anal sphincter muscles to close around it. Right. Uh So you, so you, you get worked up, you get your lube, you get the butt plug in. You're right. It's designed to stay in. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're into in and out penetration, a butt plug's not exactly the right tool for that. It's shaped differently and it's really meant for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a couple things that happen when you put a butt plug in. First of all, you can put a butt plug in and then have other kinds of stimulation, right? So then you could go down on someone, you could um, give them a hand job, you could use a vibrator on someone's genitals. And, And basically the butt plug is providing a sense of fullness inside the ass and also pressure against the walls of the rectum. And the thing about the rectum that is different from the anal canal, which is like the first inch to two inches to two and a half inches, right? The the very tightest part Uh of the butt. Once you get beyond that, the tissue of the rectum contains nerve endings that respond to pressure. And so the idea of putting something in and then it pressing against those walls can feel really good. And for some people, they don't want a lot of in and out. They actually Mm -hmm. want just that feeling of fullness. And then maybe they have vaginal penetration or like I said, maybe have these other kinds of genital stimulation. The other thing that a butt plug is great for is to be kind of like a warm up proxy. So it gives you like another set of hands in the bedroom without having to call a neighbor. Um, <laughs> right? right. Basically, you put a butt plug in and then if you start doing these other things, which are going to lead to more arousal, more turn on, maybe even another an orgasm, um, the butt plug is in there and the ass starts getting used to have something inside it right? Mm-hmm. The ass starts to relax and your body starts to adjust to having something penetrating it. So often if you use like a small or medium sized butt plug, you can use that on the way to a penis or a dildo or a butt, bigger butt plug for that matter. So it's a warm up technique also. And the, and the reason I like it as a warm up technique is that because it's not a lot of in and out, mm-hmm. it doesn't stress out or sort of overuse the sphincter muscles, right? right? So it's not constantly going in, out, in, out, in, out. That can wear someone out. And then someone could be like, okay, you fucked me with this toy and now I'm done. Like that was really pleasurable, but now my butt is done with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas if you put a butt plug in, it's warming up the butt in a way that doesn't affect the sphincter muscles, which can be more comfortable for people as a warm up to other kinds of penetration. So I I love a butt plug. And then, of course, there are butt plugs that vibrate. Um, B-Vibe makes an entire line of toys that vibrate that are amazing. Vibration obviously feels really good. Um, It's uh, it's really stimulating. We know that about vibration and the genitals. Um, But it also can help relax the sphincter muscles, which can help make penetration more comfortable and more pleasurable. Well, you just gave me a whole new look on what butt plugs are. So I appreciate (laughs) not that I am super like gung ho now, but I love that you like just explained it so much better than what I was thinking that they were for. (laughs) I don't know. But that was that's I don't know. I didn't realize that it kind of closed over and it was just literally meant to make you feel full. And yes, that something is just stagnantly in there. So that's good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Didn't you learn stuff? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I definitely learned <laughs> yeah. stuff. I'm taking it all in. Mm-hmm. So I'm like just picturing all the different. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is going. Basically. And I'm just going. Can we, you mentioned it a little bit before, but there are a lot of misconceptions about anal. Can mm. we dive into some of those? The first one I'm thinking is pain <laughs> and yes. should it ever hurt? Right. Right. This is an absolute misconception. Um, And the thing is, when we're talking about pain, we're talking about the receiver of anal penetration, right? right? right. Uh And people believe that like anal sex always has to hurt or it's always going to hurt a little. And the truth is, if it hurts, something's up and we've got to listen to our bodies. We've got to stop when our bodies, you know, register pain. It can hurt for a variety of reasons. You are tense, you're stressed out, your butt is not in the mood for anal sex. That's one way. Mm -hmm. You're not using lube or you're not using enough lube or maybe you're not using the right lube. Um, Some people have sensitivities to lube, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you could have, like if you suddenly have this sort of itching sensation, right, and discomfort, that could be the lube. You haven't warmed up. I think one of the number one mistakes people make with anal sex is they try to go from zero to 60, like just like they see in a lot of mass produced porn. Mm -hmm. And that's not how the butt works. Mm -hmm. Not even for professionals. I've been on hundreds of porn sets and even the professionals are warming up with fingers and with toys. You just don't end up seeing that, right? Right. It's on the cutting room floor, except in my movies. You definitely see that. Okay. (laughs) So, um, so that's, so, so there's like reasons for pain, right? And rushing is definitely one of them. Anal sex does not have to hurt, not even a little. You've got to, you've got to realize that this isn't like the gym. It's not like you have to, you know, no pain, no gain. It really is about listening to your body. And when we register pain in our bodies, it's a signal, it's a little blinking light that says, okay, we have to stop. Maybe we have to slow down. Whatever it is, you've got to listen to your body. That's so good to know because I thought it just always did and it yeah. would just get better the more you tried it, but like, or like you got used to the initial pain and then it was pleasurable. But I always you know, what, thought it was What I will say is it can be uncomfortable, uh-huh. right? So the first few times you have anal penetration, truthfully, the butt is not used to being penetrated, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so I do think that something, I I like to just call it disorientation, which maybe is probably not a medical term, Um, (laughs) but like your butt's a little disoriented because you're like, wait, I pushed things out. Now something's coming in. (laughs) What the hell is happening? (laughs) Um, Sometimes people feel like they have to go to the bathroom like a lot when they, when they have anal sex, like they're like, Oh no, 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 no. I have to go to the bathroom. That's Mm -hmm. again, disorientation. Your butt's like when something's in the rectum, it means we let it go. Yeah. (laughs) So I think there's like getting used to a feeling that's strange, that's unknown that you haven't done before. Mm -hmm. Strange is okay. Strange. Mm -hmm. You may need to take some deep breaths and sort of sit with and get used to the sensation. But I think strange or uncomfortable is different than pain. Definitely. I know my only reference is talking to friends who have said it's, it hurts, it hurts mm-hmm. and that's it. And that was kind of the only review. Right. So yeah. I thought that kind of just And very it. likely they just, they were breaking some of the cardinal rules of anal sex. Yeah. Likely. I'll have to check in with them. Yeah. <laughs> check in with them, please. Is there any aftercare that you should be performing after anal? What if you're sore the next day or does mm-hmm. soreness only come if you're not warming up appropriately? Yeah. So of course we can experience soreness from all kinds of sex, Uh right? Right. Your clit can get overworked. I've definitely been there. Mm -hmm. Um, Your (laughs) vagina can get pounded Yeah. again. You feel sore the next morning (laughs) or you pee and it like hits the tissue and you're like, Mm -hmm. "Mm, that was stingy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so your butt could feel sore. Um, It shouldn't feel sore after some, you know, fingers or a, a small butt plug. But certainly if you're having you know, a lot of anal penetration, penetration that goes on for a while, penetration with bigger toys, dildos, penises, it can feel sore. Um, I also want to say that if you have a little bit of spotting or a little bit of blood, do not freak out. Okay. Okay. Like I said, this 
the skin is like really rich in nerve endings. And when you get turned on, a lot of blood rushes to the area. Okay. So someone might have like spotting on tissue and be like, oh my God, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. You're not dying. (laughs) And you know, our genitals can heal very quickly. So you're, you're okay is what I want to say. That's a very important PSA because yeah. I think I would yeah. cry. I was yeah. once doing a demonstration on someone because I've, I've done live demos as part of my workshops, depending on the venue. And she said to me beforehand, just so you know, I often just bleed a little bit. And that's oh. been my butt since the beginning. And like, and I was like, oh, that's a good heads up. So that I don't yeah. think I'm like, yeah. you know, fucking you up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so, great and if you, if you have a sore butt, there's a couple things I recommend. Um, first of all, I'm also an evangelist for bidets. Mm-hmm. You know, bidets used to be this thing that was like way out of price range for people. Mm-hmm. It was a luxury. Um, and now the price of bidets has come down so much. You can get a bidet for under $100. You can attach it yourself to your regular toilet. Yeah. You don't need to be a plumber or anything like that. And you just like follow a little YouTube video. Um, So like some spritz of cold water or cool water on your butt can feel really good. So you have have a a bidet bidet that you recommend. I was looking at, I think, Tushy. Tushy is the, I think Tushy is the best one at its price range. It's like a really good, um, accessible to a lot of people. Now I, I have the Toto Washlet, which is Japanese and is, people can Google it. Uh, where I can control the angle, the pulsation, and the temperature of the oh, water, shit. and All my right. seat is heated. So but it's a whole, I don't want to brag. Fancy. A whole um, toy in <laughs> itself. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that I really like is um, there are these wipes with witch hazel in them. If you go to the drugstore, you go to the hemorrhoid section. So embarrassing. Who cares? And you can get these things called hemorrhoid wipes. All they are really is wipes with witch hazel. So if, you, okay. if you're if you concerned about the environment and you don't want disposable wipes, um, you could also get witch hazel, dilute it slightly, and use it on a washcloth or some kind of cloth. Um, this is just a really soothing, nice way to treat your butt. <laughs> yeah, it sounds nice. Um, and it's, you know, very readily available. So I think it really tames... Um, you know, a tired butt or a butt that's a little bit like, oh, it feels really good. And also putting them in the freezer and then taking them out can feel really good because they can be really cool. This just sounds good for like a Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. No, I mean, you'll, we'll, we'll get into them. Like once you use them once, you're like, this just makes my butthole feel. So if your butthole is not feeling good for a variety of reasons, they're good. (laughs) I mean, there you are. That's a tip for everyone. Yeah. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> I used a bidet once at a restaurant because it was a restaurant that my cousin worked at. So she's like, oh, try it when you go in there. And I didn't really know what was going to happen. So I freaked out. I jumped up and then the water went everywhere, like all over yeah, my clothes. That's, that's, yeah, that's a common beginner mistake. Yeah. Don't stand up just ever. Just sit, sit through it until <laughs> right. it's done. It was nice. I just freaked out. I also want to say about the bidet. The bidet can also like wash a bunch of lube off your vulva. It can mm. be great when you have your period. Bidets oh, are, smart. you know, they're good for a lot of things. Yeah, that actually, I never thought about that with periods. That yeah, that would smart. be really yes. nice. Quite like a lot less irritating, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sold. Sold. <laughs> you sold me on a lot <laughs> Two today. Two more bidets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I have a lot to try. So for someone who has never done anal play anything and is just interested, how would you recommend they get started? Just working their way up to it. I really want to give people a clear idea of like where to start. Right. And I'm included when I think where to start (laughs) is by yourself. Okay. Okay. You know, I think especially when we're partnered, we often take for granted that we should still have a relationship with ourselves, a sexual relationship. And you should maintain that relationship even if you're partnered, even if you're having sex with a partner every day, multiple times a day, once a week, whatever. Mm -hmm. You should still masturbate. Like masturbation is not for spinsters. Yeah. (laughs) It's such an old fashioned word. So you millennials will have to Google that too. Um, But it, it, it really should be part of your routine. It, it, you know, to me, masturbation is maintenance. Masturbation is self-care. Masturbation is me being in touch with my body. Um, 
And so I think, especially for beginners, and if you are nervous about it at all, if you're having any anxiety, if you're having any fear, you've got to take partnered sex off the table because that is just going to increase your anxiety. You know, there's all these things that come with partnered sex. There's expectations. You want to please your partner. You want it to go really well. You don't want to disappoint you. You don't want to disappoint them. You got to take that off the table and say, okay, I'm going to experiment first by myself. I can go at my own pace. I can figure out what I like. I can stop whenever I want. I can work up really slowly and I can get some information about what I like also. Mm -hmm. And so that can involve your fingers as long as your fingers are butt friendly, which means short, well-filed, clean nails. Okay. And if you don't want to sacrifice your nails for your butt or someone else's butt, um, you can wear a glove like a latex or a non-latex glove. Um, And put a little piece of cotton from like a cotton ball in the tip, especially if you have um, acrylic nails or nails that are like squared off or sharp or or done in a sharp. Emma has pointy ones right now. I'm like looking down (laughs) at my nails. And so, yeah, I'm not saying you have to like give up your nails, but you got to wear a glove. Um, You guys practice like safer sex with yourself is basically what happens. Um, And because those nails can scratch inside the delicate tissue um, and anyone who's ever had a little scratch or tear in their butt, uncomfortable, might bleed a little, not cool. <laughs> not <chill>. So <laughs> I want you, you can start with a finger or you can start with a really small butt plug. And this is kind of easy to find in terms of going to your local sex shop and saying, I'm a beginner. I want a beginner butt plug or oh. searching for those words on your favorite independent sex shops website. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, usually they're pretty slim. They may be the size of a finger or two fingers at the widest point. And they're built for beginners, right? They're not these huge toys like you may see in porn. Um, They're really, they're easy. And you're going to use a lot of lube. You're basically going to incorporate anal play into your masturbation routine. And see where it takes you. And then you get to experience like, oh my God, this feels weird. Oh my God, I have to go to the bathroom. Which by (laughs) the way, if you feel like you have to go to the bathroom, just go, but you don't. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Especially because you've had a bowel movement, which is a great preparation for anal sex. Okay. So, so I want you to experiment. You could also experiment with a slim, slim dildo. Okay. Slim dildo. That's the word. Or anal beads is another great thing for beginners. They're really small. You could say like, I'm going to do one anal bead. And you're going to say like, when I'm comfortable with three anal beads, I think I'm ready to take this to my partner and give them the information that I learned. So I definitely recommend solo play before anything. And then once you get with a partner, lots of communication, lots of lube, lots of checking in and going as slow as you possibly can. Okay. Two questions came up for me from that. (laughs) One, we were wondering like how much lube, like, Mm, is mm -hmm. it like a quarter sized amount? Like, right, right, right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So now we have to talk about different kinds of lube. Okay. Um, There's water-based lube, which is easy to clean up. It doesn't stain anything. Um, It's absorbed into the body. You want a lube with no parabens, no fragrances. You know, you want a lube that's good for your body, just mm-hmm. like a skincare routine. Mm-hmm. And and for anal, I recommend something thick. So something with gel or thick in the word. Um, the thicker lubes tend to stay wet a little bit longer than the thin, mm-hmm. slick ones that are meant to mimic vaginal fluids. And they can also be a little cushioning around your finger inside someone's butt or around a toy. Now, the thing about water-based lubes is they're compatible with all sex toy materials, all kinds of condoms. Um, And if you are, and there's also some, right, you know, that are made that are like organic that have four ingredients that are really good if you have sensitive orifices, right? So if you are prone to urinary tract infections, if you're prone to yeast imbalance, you want to get a lube that has the least amount of ingredients, no petrochemicals, no parabens, no stuff you can't pronounce. Okay. Good rule of thumb. 
<laughs> and and with water based lube, you do have you can use as much as you want. Um, I don't think there's too much too much lube ever, um, but it does dry up. It does get absorbed, and so you have to like re lube. You have to you have to re lube. You have to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Silicone based lubes are a lot more expensive, but you use much less. I mean, I would say you use a quarter of the amount of silicone lube during an encounter, average encounter, ver- you know, versus water-based lube. Wow. Because silicone lube stays wet for a really long time. And it doesn't get absorbed into the body. It sort of sits on top of or next to the tissue. So it sticks around. Um, the thing to know about silicone lube is that most silicone lube is not compatible with silicone sex toys. Oh, right. There are instances where this is not true. The The highest quality grade silicone toy and the highest quality grade silicone lube can work. But since this is not a regulated industry, I always say no silicone sex toys with silicone lube. Silicone basically bonds to silicone and then it ru- ruins the toy. There are also hybrids of water and silicone. So say you like the silicone, but you want to use it on your toys. You can try a hybrid. That's, And then I also want to just talk about oil-based lubes for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, I don't recommend oil-based lubes because they're not compatible with condoms or other safer sex um, materials. They will break down latex. And so you don't want that. And I think if there's two holes involved, um, a person assigned female at birth, if any of that oil lube gets into the pussy, it can set up shop. Um, You can't like douche it out, rinse it out. It kind of lingers and then it becomes an environment for infection. So it it makes for an unhappy pussy. Um, Obviously, you can try to be really good, but those holes are close together. Oh, that was all really great to know about different types of lubes to use. Are you still, I'm assuming yes. So are you wearing a condom when you're doing anal and then with a condom, are you still using lube on top of that? Yes. Okay. Most condoms are lubricated, not liberally. Right, <laughs> what, right. What's the word for that? Sparingly? <laughs> yeah. Sparingly. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, there's no such thing as too much lube. Lube is just like a part of my sex life and has been, and it's good for all kinds of sex, Mm -hmm. penetration, external stimulation, use with a vibrator. I mean, really, it's great for everything. And so um, I say lube, add lube to a condom. Um, Now, there are instances in which you don't have to use a condom for anal penetration, And that would be a situation where you're in a monogamous relationship, you've both been tested, you're negative for STIs, um, and you regularly swap bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're having unprotected vaginal sex. You can have unprotected anal sex as long as you know your partner's STI status and you know their sexual history and you are not sleeping with other people. Right. Okay. Unless you know those people's STI status and also their mm-hmm. sexual history, mm-hmm. which could be possible. And that's a lot to keep track of, too. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. So you also said that another good prepping is like pooping <laughs> before oh, anal, yeah. right? We, you know, we have to talk about poop. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm sorry, but, but freaks we do. me out all the time. Need to know. Yeah. You go. Okay. <laughs> so a couple things for prep. The first thing to do is if there's if there is poop in your rectum, that means you have to poop, right? So we basically poop is stored in the colon. When it moves to the rectum, it's like meant to be a passageway. So poop is not meant to hang out in your rectum. And when you're doing anal penetration, you're only going as far as the rectum. Okay. So you feel like you have to poop, poop. That's like your first thing, right? Which is good in terms of overall health. Anyway, anyways, <laughs> pooping is good just in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, if you are nervous about it being messy uh-huh. and this also this is another way that you're that you can get stressed and have anxiety. So I feel like cleaning your butt, it serves a practical function, but it also may be a way to calm your nerves. So that's the other thing that I think is like cleaning your butt, like cleans your butt, but it also may take the edge off in your brain, which is going to help you relax, which is going to make the whole process better. Right. 
So you can give yourself a little enema. Um, if you go to the drugstore, same aisle as the hemorrhoid wipes and get an enema. Um, it's like a little bottle, has a little tip with a cap on it. You're going to come home and dump it out and rinse it really well and then fill it with plain warm water because okay. store-bought enemas, which are the easiest way to do this, mm-hmm. um, contain a laxative. And you do not need a laxative. Ooh, it's no. going to make everything worse. Yeah, that feels it's like make not it messier good timing. than if you never <laughs> yeah, did it to begin seriously. with. Seriously. Uh-huh. So you're going to rinse it out. Plain warm water. Remember, your body temperature is about 98 degrees. Um, cold water will cause cramping. Will cause discomfort. You basically follow the instructions on the box, which means you shoot. It's just like douching. You shoot the water up your butt. You wait, and then usually stuff comes out. And I say, keep shooting water up your butt until nothing comes out except water. Right. That's a good, yeah. You don't (laughs) want to have an enema right before your hot anal sex date. No. Because sometimes the enema loosens things up and you get to clear water, but then maybe like an hour later, it's like, wait, I feel like I have to go again. Mm -hmm. Um, And that can happen for people. And so I don't want that to happen in the middle of your hot anal sex date. So I say wait two hours or more between the end of your enema and the beginning of your anal sex. Okay. Those are, that's good tips because that would be so sad if you forgot to rinse it out and then you just all of a sudden. You put in all that work. I know. (laughs) And then you have to take a long break and do it all over again. But then there's also no guarantee. I also want to say that like when you're playing with your butt, there could be stray poop. It's your butt. Um, And I also think for people who... People have to know their own digestive system. You know, I know that there are people out there who have irritable bowel syndrome, who have colitis, Mm -hmm. who have like what I would call a delicate system that may be affected by the kinds of food they eat or the amount of stress that they're under. And then I really encourage you to, again, listen to your body and know when you think your butt is feeling good that day when you think, okay, I think we can try this and to just listen to your body. Like I'm someone who doesn't want to have like a big meal before anal sex. First of all, if I have a big meal before sex in general, I just feel, I don't know. It's like, I feel full and tired and not, I like to do sex and then food, sex, then food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I think that's a good order. Yeah. (laughs) And preferably someone making me or bringing yeah, me Yeah, seriously. Food. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about some of the like positions for anal sex? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I wrote a whole book on anal sex positions called the Anal Sex Position Guide um, just because I had so much more to say. Um, and, and this was... This was after I wrote the second edition of the Ultimate Guide to Anal Sex for Women, which has 150 pages of new material. So it's not like second edition, they slapped on a new cover. Yeah. It's like a real updated, revised version. Great. Um, so the, the thing I want to say about positions is that contrary to um, what the book marketing people will tell you and the titles of many books... There are no secrets. <laughs> There's the word secret appears in two of my books. Not I didn't title them that. The publisher did. And there's all this stuff around secrets to sex, secret positions. Their positions are like how your body can get into a position with another body or more than one body. And we all have the ability to figure those out on our own. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to basically go through like the main positions because the other thing is there's really only a few main positions and then there are variations on those positions. So when you get a book that says like a hundred (laughs) positions, I'm saying really there's four and then there's like 25 variations of each of them. Okay. So missionary is person receiving on the bottom, person giving on the top. And so this is going to apply to sex with a penis or with a strap on dildo. Um, The thing about missionary that's really great is you can look into each other's eyes. uh, You can kiss, you can read each other's body language, your face to face, which can feel more intimate for people. Um, But you do have to fold yourself back a little. So you either have to spread your legs far enough or put a pillow under your butt or wrap your legs up to your shoulders in order to give the person access to your butt. Right. And so if you have mobility issues, 
if you don't have good joints, if you have a bad back, if you're not flexible, this may not be like the optimal position for you, right? They all kind of have pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Um, But also when you're in missionary, you can easily touch your own, if, if the person receiving has a vulva and a clit, you can touch yourself or you can use a vibrator to stimulate yourself. Okay. Um, cowgirl slash cowboy slash cow non-binary cow person. <laughs> cow person. Cow person is when the person on the receiving end is on top, person in the giving is on the bottom. And this can, you can face each other for cow person, or you can face away, which is reverse cow person. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't sound as good as cowboy and cowgirl. No. <laughs> we may just have to come up with a whole new gender well, inclusive It kind of sounds term. like you're calling someone a cow at that point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we may it. have to come up with a new term, but you know what I mean. Cows are yeah. cute though. So yeah. um, I like this for people who are beginning because they get to control the angle, the depth, and the speed of penetration, right? So they get to sort of come down on the dick or the dildo, and they're in charge, basically, Right. And so I think that can be really good when someone feels nervous about anal sex, that that they're in the driver's seat in this position and um, they can go kind of at their own pace. And also when you're on top, you can really play with like the angle, which can make a real difference for people. Everyone's internal geography is like a little bit different. And so this position gives you the opportunity to like really lean forward, lean straight up, lean back, lean less forward. All these, you know, variations, Mm -hmm. you can be uh, supporting yourself on your knees, you could be supporting yourself on your feet. Um, So there's a lot, there's like a lot of options here. So I like that. And again, you're still face to face. So it has all the face to face good qualities, right? Doggy style is the thing that we all think of when we think of anal sex yes. or, or many people most <laughs> of us. Um, doggy style though, isn't great for starting out necessarily. Um, you have a clear view of the situation so you can distinguish between the two holes. Cause let's face it, that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you also, if you, if someone likes deeper penetration or they like thrusting or they like fast penetration, the giver in this situation can put more of their weight and strength behind the penetration. Right. Right. So, so this is for, this is for someone who like, likes to get fucked hard. Right. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah, um, it, sound like it. It, uh-huh. it offers ample, ample space for you to reach around and touch yourself, touch your own genitals, use a vibrator, all that stuff. But in terms of beginners, it can be too intense of a position for beginners. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the only thing about it. And so the person doing the giving has to be really cautious and conscious and slow about how far they're going and how hard they're fucking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing is that people with penises often need a certain level of stimulation to stay hard. Mm -hmm. So asking someone to fuck really, really slow and go re can, they can often affect erectile issues. So, so that's also why doggy may not be the right position. The fourth position is spooning, which is sort of like the spoon where one person's behind the other person. Spooning is great for beginners because it allows for shallower penetration. And unless, you know, there's a few porn stars who do this well, but mostly you can't like jackhammer someone from spooning, right? It's more, it's like a, a much gentler thrusting. It's, you know, it can be more like a just kind of a little dance Mm -hmm. and less like I'm going to pound you situation. So I think it's good for people who, um, who want that skin to skin contact, Mm -hmm. right? They want to feel the body right up against them, which can feel really good for people, but they don't want super deep penetration or super fast penetration. And then when you're spooning, you have full access to the front of your body. Your partner can also reach around, have full access to chest, breast, nipples, genitals. Um, So there's also plenty of opportunity there. 
Those were like three more than I ever knew of for yeah. her <laughs> anal. So, I'm so glad we went over that because literally the only one I thought of was doggy style. Mm-hmm. And that just feels right. really intimidating. But, and it's the one that you described as probably more advanced too. It's more advanced. So Now that said, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love doggy style. And there's, you know, one of the things people are often like, oh, but facing away from each other. It feels so dehumanizing or whatever. But actually, like if you want a sort of dominant submissive dynamic, Mm -hmm. um, I think that can be good in doggy style. Also, I find that if you have a partner who wants to talk dirty, but is like super shy about it or nervous about it, if you turn away from them, they feel freer to do that. Right. So instead of looking right into your eyes and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to laugh. Oh my God, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm saying this. Right. People get real hung up on that mm-hmm. stuff. If you are in doggy style, I think it gives you a little bit more freedom to experiment with dirty talk and fantasies. And um, I like that personally. Yeah. I think it definitely has its place. Maybe not the first time you do it, but yeah. definitely no, something sure. to work up to. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> No, I love that. Thank you for going over those positions. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a good learning period. And then everything off of that is just like variations that you could do. Right. Which sounds you know, great. like, you know, with different missionary positions, you move your legs, you bend your knees. Um, with anal, like you could do it standing up. You can do it on all fours. You can do it with ass in the air, head down. You can do it flat on your stomach with the person on top of you penetrating. So, and and the same with spooning, like moving legs and, and, and for better access or also just for comfort. Um, yeah, they're all kind of variations on those four. Yeah. Well, lots of good things to take note of. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, we have gotten to the amazing part in our episode where we like to do homework for honeys. Where we I talk- wanted to like dance and snap, oh. <laughs> and I did snap. We're always dancing on this part, <laughs> on, on our side. Um, but it's where we talk about one actionable step that we can all take to start incorporating what we talked about today. Would you do our honeys the honor of assigning homework? Yes. So I'm going to assign homework based on where you are in this process. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think it's important and, and I, I want to sort of speak to a variety of audiences. So homework for the absolute beginner, just considering it is to read my book, the <laughs> ultimate guide to anal sex for women. It's actually run, written from a woman's point of view, but it's for people with partners of all genders. There's an entire okay. chapter about prostate play and about people assigned male at birth and men. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about the title. Mm-hmm. And if not, I recommend that you, if you can't buy a book, that you go to a reputable sex ed website. I'm going to recommend Scarlet Teen. Mm-hmm. Dot, I think it's dot .org. Okay. Maybe it's dot .com. Let's look that up uh, on my phone. Okay. So Scarlet Teen, I think it, it was originally for young people, right? And it has no pictures or any of that. It's scarletteen.com. Okay. It was originally for young people, but it is like literally the most comprehensive sex education site on the web, period, right. hands down. Mm-hmm. So, so the, so basically like the, the, for the very beginner, just thinking about this, it's going to be some research mm-hmm. for someone who's thought about it, talked to their partner about it. Um, then it's going to be solo play. Then it's going to be setting aside a time, making a date with yourself getting a butt plug, buying a butt plug, or using your finger, getting some lube, um, and taking your time and, and beginning that exploration by yourself. If you are a connoisseur, an aficionado, <laughs> you've had a fair amount of anal penetration, um, anal intercourse, then I'm going to recommend that you find a new position. So maybe this happens with intercourse. We get into a kind of like, this is the position that works for me. So let's just keep doing it. And then I'm going to recommend someone just switch it up and say, what could you possibly explore and what might open up and what might feel differently if you chose a new position? So it's like three homework assignments. That's perfect. I love that so much. I love how accessible it is to anyone really that's at any stage in their buttock journey. The other thing I forgot (laughs) to say that's really important. Yes is that some people enjoy genital stimulation along with like the front 
stimulation along with anal penetration. So they may want their penis or their vulva or their front parts stimulated. Some people want you to have, you know, want you to penetrate them and don't want genital stimulation. But I would say for the majority of people out there with vulvas and a clitoris, adding clitoral stimulation to the mix can transform the feeling of anal sex to like, huh, I don't really feel the appeal. And then start stimulating the clitoris and it transforms the feeling. So I also want to, I can't believe I forgot that, but I did. And (laughs) I I, I need to stress that. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Well, that was perfect homework. Thank you so much. Can you let our listeners know where to connect with you? Yes. Um, They can go to my website, tristanterramino.com. I know that's a lot to spell, just like cut and paste it from the show. It'll be in the show show notes. notes. Yeah. Yeah. You can follow me on social media across all platforms at Tristan Terramino. I'm taking a break from Facebook right now. It's a little bit of a cesspool. Let's Mm -hmm. all be real. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, So Instagram and Twitter, much easier to find me. My podcast is called Sex Out Loud. Um, The website for that is Sex Out Loud Radio because it began as a radio show. Sorry. (laughs) Sexoutloudradio.com. And new episodes go up on all podcast platforms on Mondays. And it's a weekly show. Thank you so much to Tristan for giving us all that great information on butt stuff or our personality, as my soccer coach (laughs) used to call it. Tell me more. Well, he didn't want, he was very specific about not saying butt to his girl soccer team. Fair. So (laughs) when he tried to explain to us how to like bump people out of the way, he's like, you're going to use your personality and swing it. Just hit them. (laughs) So he would just, you know, reference the butt by saying your personality. What a coach. And that is where all of my personality is, is in my ass. (laughs) And to this day, (laughs) it has remained below the waist. Below the waist. Anyway, and thank you so much to our listeners for sticking with it. (laughs) Sticking with it. Sticking it up there. Sticking it up there. We love you. (laughs) And (laughs) Merry Christmas. We're going to be honest. We hope you love us too. Yeah. So if you do, head over to Apple Podcasts. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me Podcast. It helps us so, so, so much. If you can leave a written review, tell people what you love about us. Leave out what you don't. Just kidding. I don't want to hear it. I don't want it right now. I don't know how you could find anything not to like. I could name a few. (laughs) You? (laughs) Anyway. Anyways. And that's kind of it. That's it. If you want to hear more of us because you think we're so much fun. um, Give us a call. (laughs) Emma's number is... (laughs) Just like text me. I don't know. It can be found on the 7-Eleven bathroom wall. You're not wrong. (laughs) In the tri-state area. (laughs) Or any brewery bathroom. Yeah. I've been there. Every single one. Mm -hmm. Anyways, you can subscribe to our email list to get our weekly emails. We'll give you the lowdown. We'll give you sneak peeks. And we're going to give you a downloadable of our 10 favorite sex things. It's really peachy. Jivey. Oh. Jivey. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it'll be good, but I guess we'll see you next week. I guess. I hope. (laughs) 